Happy World Autism Awareness Day. It is that special time of year where I, William Worley, an adult with autism, share with you my story of growing up and living with autism. It all started when I was 18 months old. My speech was becoming more and more unintelligible. I performed the same exact routine in the same exact order at the same exact time. I mimicked almost everything that I heard off of TV. I had very restricted interests. I was also easily distracted that I did not often respond to my name being called. Now there is a big debate going on as to whether you refer to this as nonverbal or no, non-speaking, but we used to refer to it as nonverbal, but I did become nonverbal. It was like waking up chained to the bottom of the ocean. You have absolutely no idea where you're at or how to escape from that, and you try so hard to reach out for help, but you can't get the words out. People are passing by and looking at you like you got problems and that you should be able to figure it out on your own. I was soon brought in for early evaluation. Now just imagine what it would be like as a mother or a parent and you're expecting a child and you have this perfect future all planned out for your child. But then later, you receive the diagnosis that your child has autism and it's presented to you like a life sentence that you did not ask for. Just imagine what it would be like to be told that your child will never graduate from school or never be independent. And just imagine being that child, clueless as to how to get on with life. Parenting does not come with a manual, so there is no manual or set of instructions on how to raise a child with autism. School was a challenge for me because of how I did not get along with my peers and how I did not understand directions. I remember one time in kindergarten when we were all seating in a group. Everybody was seating and I thought I was seating, but the teacher kept on disciplining me for not seating and kept on telling me that I need to seat with the rest of the group. And I swear, I heard words coming out of my mouth. But at the end of the session, she rewarded everybody with jelly beans except for me. I remember bees like Winnie the Pooh getting stuck in rabbit's front hole and myself mimicking that behavior by pretending to be stuck behind our entertainment center or watching the Lion King where Mufasa climbs for dear life on the rocks and I climb rocks over at my grandfather's acre land. Kevin McAllister calling 911 on a payphone and me doing the same exact thing when I was probably in second grade. I also remember another time when I was in second grade, I saw, the, saw somebody cough up phlegm, sped it onto the ground, and then rub it in with his boot. And then in class, I coughed up phlegm, spat it onto the carpet, and rubbed it into the carpet with my shoe. I remember in third grade, I had a nasty habit of pushing myself past people when we were transitioning into classrooms and getting inside the classrooms and that frustrated so many people that eventually one of the teachers pulled me out into the hallway, got in my face, and said, if you don't knock that off, somebody's gonna When my mother decided to have me homeschooled. The advantage of being homeschooled is that you are working in the comfort of your own home with a flexible schedule and flexible lessons. The disadvantage is that you will not be working with teachers that are specialized in certain subjects and you will not have resources that your special needs child might need like speed Apache or ABA therapy, stuff that the school can provide. Now mind you, I was living at an age where there was very little knowledge about autism. Nowadays, people use functioning levels to define autism, but back then we used functioning labels like high functioning or low functioning. Another disadvantage of being homeschooled is that you are missing out on a lot of social opportunities and you spend so much time at home that eventually you become a home buddy and you become so introverted that you don't want to leave home. By the time I was finally enrolled in public school, that was a huge game changer for me. People told me that I looked funny, that I talked funny, and that I walked around funny. I had been called a bunch of mean names like gay or stupid. I had been tricked into doing things that were inappropriate. 
I had been singled out by a lot of peers, or overlooked, or ignored. I participated in sports like football, basketball, and tennis, hoping that this social experiment experience would help me get recognized and be more acceptable. Truth is, while I did learn a lot and gain a lot from playing sports, I was held back quite a lot due to discrimination for having autism. I had the hardest time learning and preparing for my written test and did not get my permit until I was 18. I had an easier time with college than I did with high school, primarily because I was not often surrounded by a bunch of peers giving me a hard time. I was also participating in other things that I enjoyed, like theater. I always wanted to be an actor ever since I saw Star Wars The Phantom Menace on the big screen when I was 10 years old. That's why many people will catch me live and see me wearing a bunch of different Star Wars t-shirts. After my first two years of college, that's when I finally decided to move out and start learning how to tackle adulthood for the very first time. And boy, that was not an easy transition. I was fortunate to get a job at the college disability center where I can scan textbooks in, edit them, and make audio files. That's what helped pay the bills. When I participated in the theater department, I met very similar situations as I did in high school, like peers that did not understand an adult with autism, being rejected audition after audition for so many plays. That's when I became discouraged and started switching majors. In the year 2012, that's when I received my undergrad, which was a liberal studies degree. I moved back to my hometown, close to my mom, where I got a job. But I was so distraught from so many rejections that I faced that I was desperate to redeem myself. So an idea occurred to me, the Arts and Culture Festival. I proposed the idea to the people in charge that I give a talk about autism, and it was approved. And by the time I gave my very first talk in front of a large audience about autism, it was a rousing success. And this enabled me to give more talks about autism to various communities. By 2015, that's when my mom and I spawned the idea that I pursue a career in special education and become an autism specialist. I had got accepted into grad school. Unfortunately, I still faced many setbacks that I did similar to when I was in high school due to having autism. My local church was not so welcoming of me. They were more about favoritism based on popularity. My professors were also impatient with me when I had questions. When I was doing my student teaching, I was frowned upon for not understanding something or asking how to do something. Eventually, I was let go from my student teaching, which was very devastating for me. Nonetheless, I still stand here today with a master's degree in special education, minus the teaching license. So instead of working in a school district as a teacher, I use my social media platforms to educate others about autism. And help other people understand how they can better work with autistic people and help them become so much more than they think they're capable of. And I'm also here to help inspire to rise up and become so much more than what they were predicted to be. And I hope my story brings comfort and inspiration to those in the autism community. Whether you yourself have autism or whether you're an autism parent, teacher, family member, friend. And I hope and help acceptable to society. Thank you so much for listening to my story.